So this is eight, five, part two, okay? So yesterday we talked about, again, we're building on the formulas that you have from eight, one, eight, two, eight, three. So if you're keeping a formula list, yesterday we talked about how to find the CNR term, which would be N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. And that's your, or we, we didn't talk about that yesterday. We talked about P and R yesterday. Sorry, C and R was from the day before. Then we did P and R, which is N factorial over N minus R factorial. And that's permutations taken a certain amount at a time. If I just want to find the num number of permutations, that's N factorial, okay? So we used those yesterday. We said if we're trying to arrange objects or people or things, any kind of arrangement, and where an order matters, that's a permutation. So however many objects they are, I do that factorial. All right. Then, okay, so if you're trying to put things in order, obviously you're figuring out your permutation. Then if it's from that big set, a certain amount at a time. So this was like if you're in a race and you're finishing first, second, third. If you are trying to fill seats from a big group. If you are trying to, I don't know, where there's a smaller set. I think the one we used yesterday was like horse race, horses. So if you pulled from a specific group, um, how many combinations? And then that's your permutations and R number of times. And that's this one, okay? And then that's where we left off. So we pick up with distinguishable permutations. So what happens if in your set something repeats? Okay, and this is not like a physical human being. Those would be two different things. But this is mostly in words, where if I have a letter that repeats, it would change depending on, like, it, sorry, it doesn't change. If I put the first A in the first spot or if I put the second A in the first spot, it looks like the same arrangement, okay? So a distinguish, distinguishable permutation, again, is usually a word, and it usually has repeated word, like letters in there. <clears throat> and to find that, we do N factorial in the top, so the total amount of letters in the top. And then we look at each individual letter and list how many times it repeats, and we do each letter's factorial. So if a letter repeats twice, we would put two factorial in the bottom. If a letter's there only once, you could put one factorial. You don't need, obviously, the one factorial because it doesn't change anything. If a letter repeats three times, then you put three factorial. So for each of the ones that repeat, you're going to do that factorial in the bottom, and then you just simplify it. So it would look something like this. How many distinguishable ways can the letters banana be written? So I'm going to count my total amount of letters. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I put six factorial over. And then there's only one B, so you can do one factorial, but again, you don't need it. How many A's are there? Three. Three, so there's gonna be a three factorial for the A. How many N's are there? Two. two so there's gonna be two factorial for the N. So then when I multiply this out, I'm gonna do the same thing we did before, take the bigger factorial, break it down until I hit the biggest one in the bottom, which is the three. I'm gonna line it up with the three. And then I would do two times one. The threes cancel. The two goes into the four twice. And I get six times five, which is 30, times two, which is 60. All right, a combination is different from a permutation in that order does not matter. So if I'm pulling objects and I pull a Twix, and then on the right of it, I put a Twizzler, if I switch those two, that would be a permutation if it counts. So if I put slot in slot one, I put a Twix. In slot two, I put a Twizzler. That would be one way that that could be done. If order matters and I switch them, now it's a second way, okay? That's a permutation. If order doesn't matter and I'm just grabbing two candy bars, it doesn't matter if I have the Twix in my left or the Twizzler in my right or it's reversed, that counts as one thing. That's a combination. So this is, to me, the hardest part to figure out in all the stuff we're about to do. Is it permutation or combination? If the specific spot you're putting whatever it is in matters, that's permutation. If it does not, it's combination. So you will see words like if I am in a race and you want to figure out the number of ways a runner can finish first, second, third, that's permutation because if you finish first, or you finish second, it is different. 
if it is uh, you want to place in the top three, now that's a combination because your top three, if you're a first, second, third, it doesn't matter, you're still top three. Does that make sense? Okay. If you are like getting selected for a board, let's say like student government, right? And it's just like there's student council and the top 10 elected are representatives of your class. That's a combination because it doesn't matter which spot you're in, you're a class representative. But if it is president, vice president, secretary, that kind of thing, that is a permutation because it is different for you to be president than it is to be vice president. Does that make sense? Okay. So a combination, we use CNR. This is selecting from a subset in which order is not important. Now, the hardest thing is to like read something as a word problem and to figure out the wording on it. Sometimes it flat out says order matters and sometimes it does not and it could assign a role. That would still be a permutation, okay? So how many ways can numbers be taken from the alphabet three at a time? You're literally like, you have 26 little scrabble pieces in a bag, one from each number, you reach in, you pull out three at a time. It's not like you're pulling the first number, the second number, the third number, okay? So this would be a combination where A, B, C would count the same as B, C, A would count the same as C, A, B. And all, again, all of that is combination. So for those, we use the same formula you used for your binomial coefficient. So C, N, R, N being the total number of objects that you're trying to figure out, whether it's people or objects, and then R being the subset you're pulling from. So there is no combination of everything in the set. It's always got to be a subset. So if it says 10 objects are getting arranged, that's always permutation, which is always factorial. If it is two from the set of 10, then you have to figure out does order matter or does it not? If it doesn't matter, then it's a combination. If it does matter, then it's a permutation, okay? So that same button on your calculator that gets you the probability that had the NPR that we did yesterday has an NCR, or you can use the formula N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. There will always be less answer, a smaller answer for a combination than a permutation because something like AB would count as one, whether it's AB or BA, whereas a, and a permutation, those are two. So they'll all, this number, if you compare the two, will always be smaller. One, you're dividing by R, which makes it small, but also because of that. All right, so 10 says, in how many different ways can three letters be chosen from the letters A, B, C, D, and E? And I literally put the order of the elements is not important, but at some point that's not going to be there. So you got to be careful and pay attention to the wording. So how many ways can they be picked from A, B, C, and D, D, and E? I need to know how many letters are in there in total, which is what? Five. Five. So that is your N. And what are we picking? How many are we picking? Three. three. So without a calculator, this would be five factorial over five minus three factorial, which is two factorial, times R, which is three. And I get five times four times three factorial over three factorial, two times one. The threes cancel, two goes into four twice, and you get 10. So if it said the word like arranged or put in order, now that's permutation. All right, B says a standard poker hand consists of five cards dealt from a deck of 52. How many different poker hands are possible? And this is where order is not important. If you have ever played poker, it doesn't matter if you have two aces and three twos or if you have three twos and two aces, that's your hand, okay? So what's my N here? 52, and how many cards would be the subset? Five. Five, so that's your R. So you could have to do 52 factorial over 52 minus five factorial times five factorial, but most likely on a question with this big of numbers, I would let you use your calculators. So if you wanna take those out, let's practice that. If you have a CNR um, button, then obviously I would recommend using it. If not, if you don't have a CNR button, you could literally plug it in exactly as it is, but you have to group the denominator together. So you could simplify that. You could group this and this. The 52, you really only have to group, but you got to group the, the denominator. Or again, you use the CNR. So math, scroll over to probability, and NCR, so 52 and 5. And I get two, five, nine, eight, nine, six, 
So 2,598,960, which is why it's so hard to figure out poker. <laughs> Questions on that one? All right, so it says, how many four digit numbers can be formed under each condition? So before I even get to the conditions, and I, well, we were talking about this yesterday, but the hardest part about four digit numbers is you guys think of it as one solid four digit number, okay? You wanna think about it as though it is four separate one digit numbers. So normally there are, we said this yesterday, there are 10 single digit numbers because we have to count zero. So zero to nine, there'd be 10. And I'd fill, so if it was just how many four digit numbers, 10, 10, 10, 10. But A says the leading digit can't be zero. So if the leading digit can't be zero, it would normally mean that there's nine options for that one. Then there'd still be 10, 10, 10, okay? But the second part says the number must be less than 6,000, which means the first digit cannot be six, seven, eight, or nine. So we've already eliminated zero. We eliminate nine, we eliminate eight, we eliminate seven, we eliminate six, which means there's only five digits that can fill that first number. So then I just multiply those out and that's 5,000. So if it's easier to count how many you can have, like it can start with a five, a four, a three, a two, a one, there's still five there. B says the leading digit can't be zero and the must, number must be even. So we're back to four digits. The only um, specification on the first one is that it can't be zero, which means there's nine digits that can fill that spot. If it's even, what number are you looking at to look at it's even? Which digit? The last one. So the last one can only be two, four, six, or eight, which means that's four options. That's five options because you count zero, sorry. Zero, two, four, six, and eight. So it's five options there, which means in between is 10 and 10. And then you just multiply those numbers out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, anytime, well, first of all, and it says distinguishable permutations, I feel like one of the, I think it almost always says that, so that's your hint. But two, you have something in which something in the letters repeat. Yeah. So so it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten factorial in the top. And then there's only one X, which you don't need the one factorial, but you could put it. There are one, two, three, four L's, so four factorial. There are one, two, three K's, three factorial. And there are one, two Q's, two factorial. And then you simplify it from there. You're welcome. All right, 10 says a school locker has a dial uh, lock on which there are 34 numbers from zero to 33. Find the total number of possible lock combinations when the lock requires a three digit sequence from left to right and the numbers can be repeated. So three digits, one, two, three, okay, where the first one would be from zero to 33. So there's 34 options there. And then that can repeat. So it's 34, 34, 34. Wait, lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's too big. Nope, that's right. So if it had said it can't repeat, let's say it said cannot repeat. How does that change this? Good. Okay, so look for verbiage like that. Like those are big standardized test questions. How many of you?